consistency, availability, and partition tolerance. When it comes to system design, these are the three parameters that can help you judge how good your design is. And do you know what the fun part is? You can never achieve all three. So in this video, we are going to explore a little bit more about it. Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Before we start to learn more about these parameters, let us try to do a quick recap about what all have we already learned. We have understood why system design is essential and where will you find it in your career path. We have also discussed horizontal scaling and then vertical scaling. After that, we started discussing all of the components like a client server model, a load balancer, caching, databases, and you learned how you can connect all of them and start creating diagrams. Once you have arrived there, it is now time that you start to optimize your design. And that is where additional components like indexing, proxies, message queue, CDNs, all of these come in handy. So if all of this sounds very new to you, I would highly recommend you to pause this video right over here and check out my earlier videos first. Because only then you will be able to understand the concepts that I'm about to talk. And all the more, when we discuss all of it, I have always related all of this to example of a real life bookstore. Because that is what you see something in real life. And then it becomes very easy to connect all of these components. So just make sure you're familiar with all of these terms. If you're ready, let's start. To begin understanding, let us first of all assume that my system is distributed. And that is the most generic case. Because you are designing a system that has to scale to a million users. So definitely it will have components all throughout the world, correct? All of these are systems that are connected to each other because in the end it will work as one system, right? You can think about any big system like Netflix, Facebook. So they have data centers all throughout the world, but they are behaving as only one system. Now, when you have such a big system, you have certain parameters. The number one parameter is consistency or C. So basically consistency means that whenever you query the system, it should return you a consistent result. That means if I do my query in North America, or if I do my query in India, then both of these results, they should be the same. Think about it. You have a banking system. It does not matter where in the world you're making the query. It will always give you the exact balance that is available in your account. And that means consistency you cannot have a different result from different regions of the world. The next metric that you should know about is availability. And it simply means that whenever you query the system, you should get back some result. It should not be a case that you send a request and you just sit there idle. You don't get back any response. Think about it. You have some bad performing website where you keep on clicking and nothing happens, right? What is that case? That means that system is compromised on availability and that is not a good design, right? And think about systems like Instagram or WhatsApp or Twitter. What happens? They are always available and that gives you a better experience. So availability is a very big metric when you define how good your system is. The last and the most important metric when it comes to a distributed system is partition tolerance. So. This distributed system, it has components all throughout the world, right? They are connected. Partition tolerance means that if one of these connections go down, what happens in that case? Is your system available or is your system offline at that moment? This also defines how good your system is. Because try to think about it. If you have a huge system, that means you will have a lot of components all throughout the world, correct? Now, if your system cannot handle that, okay, one of the components went offline, then what happens to your entire network? Does it not become available or does it just stop functioning? So how you handle this particular case, it becomes very important and it greatly defines how better your system design is. So you can have a system that can completely go offline if one of the node fails or you can also have a system that still remains functional even if one of the node fails. It just depends upon the use case and what kind of a system are you designing. So these are all the three components C, A and P and they define how good your distributed system actually is. Now that you have understood all the three parameters C, A and P, we can talk about the CAP theorem. 
the cap theorem simply states that in a distributed system, you can never have consistency, availability and partition tolerance simultaneously. You will have to compromise on one of them. So if you have to see it visually, you can try to visualize it using this Venn diagram. So over here, I have all the systems where I have consistency as my priority. In all of these systems, I have availability as my priority. And in all of these systems, I have partition tolerance as my priority. So according to the cap theorem, you can have systems in this region, in this region and in this region. But you can never have a design that satisfies all of these three conditions simultaneously. This is very interesting, right? Although these are the three parameters of a distributed system, you can never achieve all of these three. We will discuss more about it. But first of all, let us try to explore what kind of systems am I talking about? So first of all, let us try to look at a system where I want consistency and partition tolerance, but I can sacrifice my availability. One such system is banking system. You know that whenever you are trying to query your bank balance, no matter which part of the world you are in, your account balance should always be the same, right? So that is why consistency is very important in case of a bank, correct? Similarly, in case of banks, you must have partition tolerance as well. It means that all of your components all throughout the world, they should remain connected. It should not happen that one of the system goes offline. That can affect what your bank balance is. And you have to always account for that case. So what do we do in that case? We sacrifice our availability. So you must have seen that whenever your system goes down, then the bank will simply say that I'm unavailable. The transaction cannot proceed. So basically what you're doing, you are saying that, okay, my system isn't available because there has been some error because consistency and partition tolerance are my priority. I can be a little relaxed on the availability because I want that my transaction should either succeed completely or it should fail. I can simply say that right now my servers are busy or the service is not available. That is completely fine, but you cannot have a wrong transaction showing up. So you have to make sure that your system is available to handle partition tolerance and you want consistency as well. So this is one example that lies in the region where you can sacrifice on the availability. Let us now look at a different kind of system where you are prioritizing consistency and availability, but we can be a little lenient on the partition tolerance. One such example could be a ticket booking system. You can have tickets booking for airlines or you could have ticket booking for concerts, right? So in this kind of a system, you want it to be consistent. That means if I have booked a ticket, it should show me available. If my ticket is canceled, it should be canceled no matter where in the world I am looking it for. And you want your system to be available as well. That means you should always allow ticket bookings. It could be for concert A, it could be for concert B, it could be for concert C. And notice, in such a kind of system, you can sacrifice your partition tolerance. It simply means that, let us say one component of your system goes down. Now what happens? Let us say you had three concerts, concert A, B and C. So if concert C is blocking or there is some problem in that part of the network, what do you do? Do you bring down your entire site? No, right? What you can simply do is you can block off ticket bookings for concert C, but concert A and concert B will still be available. So your system is available to book all of the tickets, right? So you had consistency and you had availability but you're sacrificing on partition tolerance. And same is the case with air tickets as well. You can block bookings for a certain airline, but all of the other airlines, they are still available. So that is why you need to understand what is your use case when you're designing the system. And with this, we can now talk about the third system where I want availability and partition tolerance, but I can sacrifice on my consistency. And such a system is very familiar to you. And these are social networking systems. You might have noticed that whenever you open Instagram or Facebook, it is always available. Whenever you open it, you have content over there. And all of these systems are partition tolerant as well. Even if one of the systems goes down, they have database backups all throughout the world 
and then they can get you content from those different networks, right? But what about consistency? You might have seen that it is not necessary that as soon as you post a comment and immediately it will start to show up on your friend's profile, right? It can happen that you post a comment and then eventually after some time the comment will show up. Or there could be a very popular post that has millions of comments. So it is not necessary that any comment you post, it should be immediately visible to everyone. You can sacrifice on the consistency over there. What you can do is you can give them eventual consistency. It simply means that let us say a post has million comments. Then if I post a comment, then after one hour or two hours, like after some time, that comment will be visible. So that is where I am sacrificing on consistency. I do get eventual consistency. So all of these are very good examples where you are sacrificing one of the components to achieve the other two. And that is what the cap theorem is. You can never have all of these three components simultaneously in any available distributed system. Now, there should be a burning question in your mind. Why does this even happen? Why can't I achieve all of the three simultaneously? Well, that is because in case of a distributed system, it can become a paradox. You know that a distributed system is connected throughout the world, right? When everything is functional, it is a happy case and you will be serving clients every time and everyone is happy. The problem arises whenever there is a network problem between any of the two components. So this is a huge system. But to narrow down things, let us look at only two servers. So both of these servers are currently connected, right? Now think about a case that this network goes down. In such a case, both of the servers A and B, they cannot communicate with each other. So if you want consistency, then both these servers, they should agree, correct? Think like this. If it is a banking system and I ask that, hey, tell me the balance, then both server A and server B, they should give you the same response. But since this network is broken, then you cannot give them the exact result. So your availability is compromised, right? But on the other hand, if this network goes down and if you want availability, then what will happen? You can query both of the servers and they should give you some response, right? But since they cannot communicate with each other, they can give you inconsistent results. So you have compromised on the consistency. So you see how this is a paradox. Either I was getting consistency and partition tolerance or I was getting availability and partition tolerance. You cannot have all the three. And that is one caveat when it comes to distributed systems. So this is what the cap theorem is all about. Whenever you encounter problems in an interview and your system is distributed, it is a very good idea that you talk to your interviewer about all of these aspects. You must ask them, hey, what is the use case? What is more important to you? And based upon the system you are designing, you can choose to sacrifice one of them. If it is a banking system, you know that it has to be consistent and it has to be partition tolerant. Whereas a social networking website can have eventual consistency. So the design decision is always up to you. The final choice will determine how good of your system is. So while going throughout the video, what other thoughts came into your mind? What other systems have you found out where one of these things is compromised? Tell me everything in the comment section below and I would love to discuss all of it with you. It will become a really good discussion when you go through this video once again in the future. As a reminder, if you found this video helpful, please do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This keeps me motivated and I can make more such videos. Also, a huge shout out to all of the members who support my channel. You guys really keep me going. And as a member, you do get priority reply to your comments and early access to new videos as well. Stay tuned for my upcoming video. We will be soon designing a rate limiter. Until then, see ya.